Thank you, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. And uh, thank you for being here uh, and giving me an opportunity to talk about uh, some of the things I've been thinking about for a long time. And I hope they, uh, if they do not make sense tonight entirely, I hope they point in directions in which uh, you will be able to go and think about and they will hopefully make sense. I know it sounds kind of esoteric to talk about uh, remote viewing and non-local consciousness, but we'll, we'll simply make it as, uh, uh, as simple as it has to be for me to grasp it and talk about why it's relevant to hacking. This talk is really about you. It's about your innate intrinsic ability to observe the deeper aspects of yourself or the dimensions or the structures. The language is hard to use because um, these things are imprecise and yet, and yet they're very important, I think. It's your ability to observe the deeper dimensions of your own consciousness or the structures of your own cognition when you are engaged in hacking. And I mean high level, immersive, deeply intransitive hacking so that when you find yourself lost in that immersive process and you actually enter into the system, when you are engaged with the system in a way that involves what we call intransitive attention, you forget yourself and lose yourself in the process, almost, and at the same time watch yourself hacking. If the part of your mind that watches yourself watching can back up and watch your own processes and watch, in effect, your own mind engaging with the interface of the system with which it engages, and at the same time distinguishes between yourself and the system that you are hacking. This talk really is about your ability not only to see that, to know how to go there, but to remember how to do it and how to go there so you can go again as you choose or as you allow. And that, in turn, empowers you to bring that self-awareness uh, that knowledge, that power, to big picture hacking, which is the larger enterprise of your life, to your obsessive passion for knowing what works and how it works, not only in technical machinery, which is human made, but in the entire universe. So it's really about the process of hacking turning into a metaphor in the middle of itself for how you engage with the other enterprises in your life. Because hacking is not uh, not just a hobby or not just something trivial that we add on to who we are. When you engage in it as the best of you have, uh, it, it literally becomes your modus operandi in the world and it becomes your approach to all other things as well. And incidentally, if you can do this, then it will also make you a better hacker. Because you will know the differences that matter, the differences that make a difference. Gregory Bateson said, information is the difference that makes a difference. Information is the difference that makes a difference. My observation at this point in my life is that information is available everywhere and always because it is the intrinsic nature of the universe to disclose itself, to include sentient life forms like us in the process of becoming first aware and then self-aware. That is aware and then aware that we are aware. So what hacking, in fact, is doing as a transformational process from the 70s, 80s, 90s into this century is exactly what General Hayden referred to at Black Hat in his really quite clear and excellent keynote. Uh, it is a new domain, a new domain of consciousness and a new domain of action which cannot be translated back into the prior domains which belong to a time of prior technologies which shaped our relationships and our cognition and our very sense of identity and our being in a completely different way because the technology does make those forms go liquid and we find ourselves having to retailer ourselves for the new shape and the new fashion that the new technologies uh, make available. So in 45 minutes, this is an attempt to sketch out how remote viewing, how non-local consciousness, how big picture hacking, and how knowing who you really are give you not only root, but the root of all roots. I've included a number of documents on the CD. They include uh, reviews of books that I've written. They include interviews with people like Edgar Mitchell, the Apollo 14 astronaut, or Joseph McMonagall, one of the prime, uh, one of the most more excellent remote viewers in the NSA Stargate program uh, and other people who have tried to engage with the darker sides and the shadow sides of these enterprises 
in order to find out what's really real so that it can relate to the things that we take so for granted when you sit in front of a computer screen today and simply engage with it. So it's really about mindfulness and vigilance. Mindfulness and vigilance. Know yourself and be aware. It's really about just that. But it's about doing that more and more deeply. There was a guy who formed a program called EST once upon a time. He took a lot of flack for it, but really it was quite powerful process that delivered the experience of no mind the Zen notion of Sartori in a couple of weekends in a basement of a hotel. It was quite an American Esalen type accomplishment, but he really did it. And the way he characterized, you have to forgive my language, but it's Werner's language, not mine. Uh, he characterized this level of awareness as really simply knowing the difference between your own ass and a hole in the ground. And he characterized the mystic at the same time as someone who simply knows what's so. And he added, he also knows so what? In other words, knowing what's simply so is the most that you can get your mind and your hands around and knowing that it's so what because it doesn't point to anything deep or profound at all but something very light is why there's a lot of laughter in the halls of Zen monasteries and there is also a tremendous amount of laughter in the hallways of hackers and I think some of it is for the same reasons because what looks to be real as you engage with it dissolves and discloses another level of the game. And this happens inside ourselves also and in deep states of meditation as well as when we engage in that intransitive way, that selfless way with the system we are hacking. So in hardcore hacking it means beating the mind that designed the system, but in life it means aligning with the larger universal mind that seems to have designed the system as well. I'm going to refer as well to experiences of strangeness that people have in the presence of what we call serendipity uh, UFO experiences. The strangeness seems to be a function of the alteration of space-time in the presence of whatever it is that causes the experience. They cause anomalous experience and then we start to get the idea that what we call anomalies are really the centers of entirely new ways of constructing reality, physics and science and biology and other things as well. And so anomalies are not really anomalous at all. Anomalies are foundational of the next stage of understanding. And in a wonderful book Einstein wrote in the 30s on the evolution of physics, he talked about the transformation of the mechanical and the Newtonian view of physics into relativity and quantum mechanics. And he does it in that book with a great deal of clarity uh, but it always begins with anomalies, calling attention to themselves and compelling you not to ignore them, but to ask if this is true in the universe, what else must be true? Uh, so, I know that sometimes in the 15 years that I've been speaking here and in other places that I've been speaking, before that in my other careers, people have questioned my sanity. I do understand that. Uh, there's a fellow who's heard me speak in the Netherlands a lot. He's with the CIA equivalent. Uh, in Suriname and he wrote to me after reading some of the things I'd written exactly from which planet do you come and Robert Morris senior not the Morris worm Morris uh, but the old man uh, kindly took my book islands in the click stream at a black hat briefings many years ago and he read it one night and he returned the next morning and he said you do know don't you that you are insane and I said thank you very much and he said, I was hoping you would take that as a compliment. Another friend of mine uh, who works at NSA, reading my current book, to which I will refer, Mind Games, because the material for it comes from the same place as this talk comes from. Uh, after reading the first chapter, uh, in the introduction to which he is quoted, because he called me up and said, you know, don't you, uh, that 95% of this first story is, uh, is not fiction. He said it reminded me of Robert Redford's movie, The Three Days of the Condor, where the CIA agent uh, read fiction to find out what was real. He said, but the key is, of course, you have to know which 5% is a lie in order to have the key to the code. And then he laughed and laughed because he agreed that people will probably think what is true is not true in the story and what is not true is true. It's called Zero Day Roswell and it's about the uh, uh, suicide crash of a spaceship in order to give us the internet. Uh, the purpose for which is for us to put everything on the internet so that the alien species does not have to waste its time going to cocktail parties and things like this and taking notes 
that if it just gave us the internet, get a couple of suicide grays to be willing to crash the ship, give us the, the fiber optics, give us the chips, they knew we would build the internet, they knew we would put our consciousness entirely on it, and we would tell the whole universe everything. Well, that's pretty funny. But the uh, parts that underpin it are insights into how, in fact, people do go behind systems uh, and what they do with those systems when they get behind them, and it's not always what people uh, say they do. Uh, things are not what they seem is in this, this book, Mind Games. If it has a theme, it's the themes are not what they seem, and that's another way of saying that anomalies call attention to a deeper and different reality. So I tell you those stories of myself because uh, I know really that I wasn't insane. That insanity, like wisdom, is contextual. Oh, I've had my doubts. And I'll talk about those moments in which you are so changed by what you are learning and what it is doing to you, which some of you may have experienced as well, that you experience a traumatic state. But insanity, like wisdom, is contextual. And if you see those anomalies first, the context that is missed by other people, which is what hacking really is, so that you can manipulate it and turn the context into content, then you will look as if you are insane to those who see only the, the picture itself and not the frame and not the ground of the picture itself. Because the truth is that that Suriname CIA man also said, through your writing I discover reality again and again, and Robert Morris Sr. held up the book in a seminar and said, everything I needed to know in life I learned from this book. Uh, which was his way of saying, there, I paid you for the book. Uh, and uh, Hal is a fellow with whom I have discussed these deep, real things again and again. Now, to understand security, you need the notion of a pattern. But as a friend of mine at CIA said, uh, not that I work at CIA, but as a friend of mine who works, I work for nobody. You know, I, I, I have nowhere to lay my head. I, I'm all things to all people and nothing to anybody in particular, except an opportunity in a space. But uh, this is a friend at CIA. Uh, she said, you do not know what assumptions the system is making. What assumptions are implicit in the architecture of the system you're hacking? You can't query the system about its own assumptions because it cannot reveal in a self-conscious way its own flaws. The system is not self-aware. What does the system think it knows that it may not, in fact, know? In other words, what is intrinsically built into the system as assumptions that the system itself is not aware has been built in? People who build systems do not understand that principle. And then she quoted the uh, phrase, cryptography is the opiate of the naive. Cryptography is the opiate of the naive. Uh, Peter Neumann once mentioned to me, he was talking to Ron Rivest, who's a well-known cryptographer and brilliant at what he does. And they were talking about voting machines. Ron was pointing out, Neumann is uh, at uh, SRI, has been for decades, old Multics man, and he pointed out that the voting machine is essentially broken. It, c it can be hacked. Uh, but Rivest was focused on the cryptography, and he said, uh, that's not my problem. <laughs> and that's the way people think who see the content as if it's all that matters rather than the larger context which hackers have to see in order to make the system do something for which it was not designed. The environment in which the logic is running is an unknown from a security standpoint, and the environment too, the context, needs to be audited. Turtles all the way down. Context must be turned into content. So that's why it's not a good idea to use new environments for security critical code. You may remember when PHP came out, people rushed to it because it was easy to use, but it caused a few problems coming down the road. So looking at the context, seeing it clearly, and then articulating it, and then realizing that you yourself are the context for the foundational knowledge by which you see, and seeing that clearly is the subtext of this talk. Fifteen years ago, I did my first talk at DEF CON. It was called Hacking as Practice for Transplanetary Life in the 21st Century. In it, uh, that sounded insane then, but here in the 21st century, I could say to the young hackers who are out there, most of you, um, maybe it's just who's in the front row, you don't look that young anymore, but they were young hackers then. Uh, I was reminiscing with Matt, with Barcode, about our first meeting. I remembered his arrest only a week later, and uh, my first outreach to a young man who knew well that he wasn't 18 and was okay. Uh, but they were young, and I could look at who they were. This is one of the advantages, maybe the only one, of being older, is you begin to see